I think I was about 20 years old when I bought my first ever pair of loafers. They were from Top Man, they were a fake black patent leather. They absolutely destroyed my feet and the shoes themselves fell apart pretty soon afterwards. But from that point on, I have been hooked on loafers. I think they are the ultimate shoe of the modern gentleman. They're less formal than Oxfords or Brogues, but they're also more elegant and dressed up than a pair of sneakers. But I understand that some people have this conception that loafers are old man shoes. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some do's and don'ts when you're buying loafers so that you can look youthful and sophisticated in this classic style of footwear. So loafers make some people think of their grandpa's slippers, but what they're really talking about there are moccasins or driving shoes, which have some similarities in appearances, but some crucial differences. So when you're buying online, I would avoid anything with the term moccasin or driving shoe in the description. What really makes a loafer look too old fashioned is the shape of the toe. Definitely avoid anything with a very rounded toe and a man of any age should avoid a shoe with a square toe. Also watch out for cloth of any type that will definitely give it more of an old man slipper appearance. And when it comes to the sole, I would avoid any type of thick, rubbery sole with what is known as a lug sole. This is this kind of grippy texture underneath. Now I know this will upset some people because GH Bath, which is a very classic men's loafer brand, makes several styles with this type of sole and they're very enjoyed and adored by vintage and classic style enthusiasts. But this channel is about dressing in a youthful, modern gentleman way and I just don't think this style of shoe looks very attractive in 2023. So what should you choose? Well, I would go for a slim silhouette, specifically at the toe. And this is going to be a bit of a balancing act between something that's stylish and slim enough that it's visually appealing, but also wide enough that it's comfortable to wear. Personally, I have very broad feet, so it can be hard for me to find a pair that's just right. And it does take a lot of going into stores, trying a few pairs on or ordering online and wearing them at home, sending them back. But eventually you will find something that just hits that right sweet spot. When it comes to the sole, I would look for a slim sole, either in leather or rubber. If you walk a lot in your loafers, rubber will be better. And when it comes to the upper of the shoe itself, you know, you can either go for leather or suede. Uh, leather will come generally in three colors, either black, brown, or oxblood. I think black is great for date night, evening events, more formal occasions. Brown is a great day-to-day -day option, and oxblood works pretty well for both. You can also be fun and have a little bit of a flamboyant touch with some textured leathers, like an alligator leather, crocodile, and I've even seen lizard leather. With suede, this is a little bit of a less formal material and you can also find some interesting fun colors like blue or gray. Now, there are three main style of loafers that you will come across. There's the penny loafer, the horse bit loafer and the tassel loafer. Let me talk about the horse bit loafer first. And I think that if you don't own a pair of loafers yet, this could be a really good one to start with. It was actually first invented by Gucci in the 1950s and it was a way for the Italians to separate themselves from the Americans who were wearing Oxfords and brogues and instead go for something a little bit more stylish and sleek. Now, a real Gucci loafer will cost you $920 for a new pair, but you can get them secondhand for around $200 on eBay. And if you don't want to wear used shoes, I totally understand. I'm gonna share with you at the end of the video a affordable alternative for less than $200. If you like the preppy aesthetic, then maybe you will enjoy wearing a penny loafer. These also gained popularity in the 1950s, especially among Ivy League college students. So if you're somebody who has been wearing this old money look, then a pair of penny loafers could be a great addition to your wardrobe and it will definitely make your outfits stand out more than if you were wearing white sneakers. And finally, we have the tassel loafer. Now, some people consider the tassel loafer to be an old man type of shoe. I disagree. I think it depends on the type of tassel that you choose and you can choose how flamboyant you want to be depending on the size of the tassel. Whatever style of loafer you choose, I would recommend trying wearing them without socks or with no-show socks. This shows your ankle and I think it gives it a little bit more of a youthful and rebellious appearance. If you would prefer to wear socks, then I would go with a pair of socks that are plain and just a slight shade darker than the shoe itself. 
A lot of menswear enthusiasts or vintage people like wearing white crew socks with loafers. And I know this is a very classic look and it was popular in the 1950s, but I think that in today's day and age, it's not a very attractive style. So I would go either with a, a subtle pair of socks or best of all, the no-show socks. When you do wear loafers without socks, um, the leather might be a little bit tough on your ankles. So I would suggest breaking them in by wearing them around the house with two pairs of real thick socks and just get them leather softened up a little bit and then when you go out and you wear them with your no-show socks it won't give you as many blisters and cuts on your feet. So I do have some suggestions for uh, loafers in different styles that you might want to check out. The first one is by Steve Madden. So this is a very affordable pair. I think it's great for your first loafer. It's like a cheaper alternative to Gucci so you have that cool Italian elegant style but at a fraction of the price. Now normally I would suggest more items around this price range or even cheaper but when it comes to shoes and specifically loafers going cheap can give you a lot of grief with your feet. The leather is going to be very tough and it might cut into you so I wouldn't go any cheaper than this. A nice upgrade would be this pair from Suit Supply. I recently tried these on at their store in New York and I thought they looked very elegant and very comfortable too. One thing I love about suede loafers is that they are less formal. You could wear these with jeans, you can even wear them with shorts, or you could use them to dress down a suit or a blazer. When it comes to tassel loafers, I think this pair from Charles Tierwitt represents great value for money and a very nice all-round style that you could wear again and again. Loafers are my favorite shoe. Like I said, they are less formal than Oxfords and Brogues, but more elegant, more gentlemanly than a pair of sneakers. I think they have a little bit of a youthful, rebellious edge and it's great that you can just slip them on and off. Also living in a hot climate, I find them to be more comfortable than a pair of boots. So guys, let me know in the comments, what was your favorite pair of loafers from this video? And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.